Washington Watch, and I'm your host, Tony Burton. So glad to uh, to have you with us on this Tuesday afternoon. The website is TonyPerkins.com. All right, we were just talking with Dan Celia about uh, the, the fear and uh, the fear looming over the reopening of society when it comes to workers, comes to business owners. And it, it, it reminds me of uh, FDR in his first inaugural address, um, you know, back in the Great Depression. You know, not, I don't agree with everything he did, but he did do some good things. He had some good speeches. But one thing he, he said, and you'll recall this because it's a very famous quote, but only thing we have to fear is fear itself. And fear grips so many people. And I've seen this, and we've talked about it from day one of the coronavirus, is fear. And for believers, you know, we can't operate out of fear. You know, 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. This is a great opportunity for those who have confidence in the midst of this. And in our economy, the way it, the whole thing works, it's based on confidence, consumer confidence. You heard that term before? And if we shrink back in fear, afraid to go to work, afraid to go out of the house, which, quite frankly, that's the message the media has been hammering us with. Oh, but if you go out, there's going to be a second wave. You shouldn't start too soon because there's going to be a second wave. But here, I have confidence in the American people. And uh, to, to, to prove that point, uh, our good friend Scott Rasmussen, pollster publisher of scottrasmussen.com, uh, has a new survey which suggests the American people are not necessarily listening to the media. Joining us now is Scott himself. Scott, welcome back. Tony, it's great to be with you. You know, I've got to, uh, I, I chuckled at your opening reference to FDR because, you know, the very first policy decision he made, he gave great speeches and, and warned people not to be afraid. He wanted to try and build confidence and make people feel better. And the very first policy decision he did was to legalize beer at the end of Prohibition. Uh, you know, he wanted to he wanted to get people to think about uh, something besides the economic crisis because more was going on in the nation. Well, they would forget uh, all their troubles. Be a position. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> you may not appreciate the policy step, but, you know, he recognized it was something uh, bigger than a, a simple question of the government fixing what had gone wrong. Um, in our polling that you referenced, like everybody else, we find if you ask people, you know, has the government gone too far in locking things down or not far enough or whatever, uh, very few people, only 23 percent in our poll, think government officials have gone too far. Seventy-one percent say they've either not gone far enough or have found about the right balance. And so that leads to that commentary you mentioned. Oh, nobody wants to end the lockdowns. But uh, it's always good to ask questions from a different perspective. And we said, should every business in America, every business, not the chosen few, not the essential ones, should every business be allowed to open if they establish appropriate uh, social distancing protocols? 60% said yes. Only 26% said no. So a majority is saying we think every business that's behaving responsibly should be allowed to open right now. Um, and that just throws an entirely different flavor on the discussion. But that is what makes capitalism work, our free market system. You don't force people to go in and buy a loaf of bread. They feel comfortable in going into your establishment. And, and so it's up to you to draw the consumers in. And that's what makes our system work. And that's why it addresses the fear factor. Uh, but it does it in a way that it's not respond. The government's not the one doing it. It's the business owner. That's right. And there's something else that came out of this. You know, we looked at the details of the survey data, and we took a special look at the people who said they don't think the government has gone far enough at this point. And you know what? When we asked them, should every business be reopened if they adhere to these protocols, they're evenly divided. 39% said yes, 45 no. These are people who said the government hasn't gone far enough yet. But if you frame the question in terms of, you know, an appropriate behavior, right. they're split right down the middle. And, I, and by the way, something else that's going on here, in public dialogue, uh, terminology sometimes gets confused. You know, a lockdown 
by the government is different than social distancing being practiced by individuals, but they've almost become the same thing in the media narrative. Um, and voters still want safety and responsible behavior, but they just don't want the government lockdowns. Now, the the bottom line of what you found is that only one out of four voters today is opposed to letting all businesses reopen in a responsible manner. One out of four. That's just 25 percent. So despite the media's harangue, their constant barrage of fear mongering, the American people realize what we've got to do. And if the businesses, if the establishments that they go to are allowed to open, guided by you know, good or best practices, they're, they're ready for them to open. They are. And, and look, there's different opinions about what are best practices. Is being three feet apart okay? Is being six feet apart? Um, what happens when you sneeze? You know, what people are really looking for, again, is a sense of uh, they don't want to just throw the doors open and pretend that nothing happened. We do have a, a serious right. virus, a serious contagion. Okay, we're adults. Let's deal with it and move on. Right. And that's where I think I, I find it interesting. I don't know if you I looked at your cross tabs and it was more the demographics. I don't think it broke down. So, well, it did break it down. Conservative uh, party and uh, ideology. I, I mean, I think yep. those with a with a liberal orientation tend to it, correct me if I'm wrong. But my perception is based on what I've been looking at, the kind of a 30,000 foot view is that those from a liberal orientation lean more to the government being the problem solver as opposed to trusting the free markets and the business owners to be providing the uh, protections. Right. And, you know, let's, uh, and I would put it in the context of civil society. You know, can people in their own uh, decision-making and behaviors as individuals, as nonprofits, as businesses, can they create something that uh, is generally safe and reasonable, or does it have to be government regulation? You know, on the question of opening every business establishment, liberals are evenly divided. Conservatives strongly say yes, uh, again, consistent with that view. Um, and there's something else going on in this whole process that I think is uh, beginning to shift that's really important to note. Sixty-four percent of voters say that if a government shuts down your business, they've ordered a lockdown, uh, they are responsible for covering the losses incurred by the owner as a result of the government action. Um, there is a sense of, you know, there are limits to what a government can do and governments must be held accountable. And I think this gets back to the same concept. Okay, if a decision was really important that had to be made to shut something down, that's great. But now let's uh, figure out how to how to uh, compensate those who made the sacrifice. That's that's new, frankly. I mean, that's yes. uh, that that's because I remember back when I was in uh, in, in office in uh, holding office, and you know, you have <laughs> government taking actions that routinely impact business. For instance, I remember a, a situation where. Uh, road improvements. So they shut down a major road to do the road improvements. It took about six months and all the businesses there uh, basically dried up uh, and, you know, right. legislation introduced to compensate those businesses. And that was, you know, roundly rejected. That was not the responsibility of government, even though they were negatively impacted by government action. So this is this is ushering in, I think, a, a, a much different understanding of the actions that government takes its impact upon private businesses and the financial responsibility that the government then has. Yes. And I, and I think, you know, to be fair, this is a very dramatic example. You know, if a government tells a, a restaurant they can't stay in business, um, there's no there's no arguing about how much the road construction hurt the business. Um, it clearly you you have told them to stop. So I think it makes the point very clearly for most voters to understand. It it does, but it just as we go forward, we're talking about uh, you know the media saw about a second wave and maybe having to do periodic yep. rolling shutdowns. Uh, this could become very costly if this is uh, the the view going forward. 